so we just broke the story. This popular influencer has been allegedly charged with breaking the internet after recent eye-popping content that was released directly on their social media platforms. More on this later. Yo, yo, yo. What's good? Y'all already know it's your boy Gio, man. Got some news for y'all today, man. Um, this YSL case is just really getting out of hand. And, uh, you know, for me, it's like everybody like Woody, but then everybody in his camp is mad that he allegedly snitched and he's getting all the clout and blowing up. But then he's like a funny character. Then I ask on trial, he's funny, you know, funny character. Hanging with Charleston White, another funny dude. Um, but then it's like his team's mad and somebody just got unalived that some something he had going on, a video or some type of gathering. I guess they looking for him, so he's fearing for his life now. And uh Young Thug really don't like him, it seems like from some of the videos you you see when I show you the clip and of how he looks at Woody and uh Man, it's, it's, it's crazy, you know, that it's going down like this. And what is getting a lot of limelight, good limelight from it. And Young Thug is like getting the worst. And he was one of the big dogs. And it's like no support from what I look. And what I'm seeing, the way it look, that's just what it is. And your boy Woody is chilling. Um, you know, uh, he made that new song, but I got some clippings of the founder start of YSL, uh, his opinion, and everything that's been going on leading up to now. Y'all got to see this. And do y'all think Woody is right or wrong? And the situation that just happened with that shootout where he was at, do you think that was meant for him? You know, people looking for him, or do you think that was just somebody that he was just around? Um, I really think you do need to be on his P's and Q's. I've heard that from a few sources, but y'all let me know what y'all think. Check this out and drop a comment, subscribe, hit that thumbs up. Keep showing the love, man. I really appreciate it, man. I'm gonna keep bringing y'all all of this information, man. And y'all stay tuned for the next one. He need to be so irrelevant, man. He want that seven days of fame. He gonna get it. He be playing with me all the time. I'm suggesting that. I'm watching, boy. It looks like our boy YSL Woody got to take a break from doing 20v1 and he got to get back to the streets, man. All right, he got a new op that's loaded. Now, the new op that's loaded is a man by the name of YSL Mondo. YSL Mondo is somebody who has been credited as being the co-founder or founder of YSL along with Young Thug. Man. Mondo was going from platform to platform calling Gunna a snitch for taking a plea deal. Well, fast forward, Gunna, you know, has defeated the snitch rumors. So it looks like YSL Mondo is changing his tone on Gunna. And in the process, he now decided he was going to throw YSL Woody under the bus. I feel bad because now a ninja who literally is a real life rat running around the city getting glorified. Come on, man. Man, did multiple interviews, man. Man's a real live informant, man. Which led to YSL Woody bringing him to smoke and static. Thug, back to what you were saying, too. Y'all saying y'all love Thug and y'all with Thug, but y'all f***ing with a and glorifying the who started this whole Rico and lied on this man and recently just told y'all he lied on this man. But I feel like he 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 burning out now. It's getting to the end of the ropes with him because it's only so much cap shit you can do. When you're a fake nigga and you got some mystery in your history and you got flaws on your name and your face card is fed up, it's only so much you can do. Okay, the internet shit cool, the 20 versus one and all that, but how many more, how long that shit gonna go? How many 20 versus one you gonna keep doing? How many of your music is ass, so your music ain't gonna keep you relevant. Mm -hmm. It's like, how, 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 how far you think you finna go, my boy, with this shit? You just got your little couple months of fame, but really, 
starting to realize now, and folks who didn't know, you got people who really didn't know. Like a female reached out to me who did a 20 versus one with him and was like, I honestly did not know he told on nobody. She thought he got famous off being retarded on the stand. Like, like I told you before y'all called me to trial, I have lied. I made things up. I told you this before y'all brought me in this courtroom. And I'm telling you now. Saying slow shit and acting retarded. Like she didn't know that this shit was on stand telling. But that's like, what Wu, that's what Woody didn't understand. And that's what a lot of us don't understand is that the masses don't really understand the court process. They don't understand street shit. They really exactly. don't understand. They don't. So all they know is Thug is on trial for life and Woody up there slick looking like he keeping it real. You asked me about 2015. I have got my life together. Y'all trying to put this on my conscience. Y'all trying to put people's life in my hands. I don't lie on people. I don't want to be here. Y'all have pressured me. I'm tired of y'all because y'all know y'all are wrong. Facts. It looked like he's spinning look. them and saying yep. bullshit. Yep. They don't know that it's nine hours here that he done winning. Eight hours here, four hours here. And that's what's breaking niggas' hearts that's yep. really yep. tied to it. A lot of people don't like me. I can't go down and hang out with Kansas like that. I can't y'all this much right here. I know people are going to go do it. I can't go down and hang out with Kansas like that. I Who's target? Who I guess? I mean, who'd you like that? Shit, Kill. So, how? Shit, I've always been tight. Who? Kill. Who's always been tight? Shit, Kill. I know. He's, he's, he's this man. He's a sex with this guy. He won. This is just as much as I can say. Because it seemed like he was really plugged in with them. It seemed yeah, he, like that. He, he, he was around just for a brief, a brief period of time. You feel what I'm saying? Because he wasn't around us when we first just like i said kind of came up with the movement he he wasn't birdman wanted Quan and thug signed to rich gang and young thug was willing to do anything to make it happen this is when things started to go left as not long after Quan rejected signing to birdman his career and his people started to pay the consequences not long after Quan's manager stopped him from signing to rich gang he was taken out on january 10 2015 donovan thomas was ambushed in front of a barber shop in atlanta he was struck multiple times and passed away due to his injuries. He was only 26 years old. In the streets, the news quickly spread that YSL was behind the hit on orders from Young Thug himself. This was eventually verified after it was presented in court as one of the reasons Young Thug and YSL were indicted on Rico. After the hit, Quan completely detached himself from Young Thug while Young Thug was still trying to sign him. This is when Quan was seen online claiming that he was no longer making music with Young Thug. This only seemed to make the problem worse as Thug felt that if he couldn't have him, no one would. And soon after Quan denounced Thug, it appeared Quan became a target of Thug as well. As Quan was eventually targeted in a drive-by attempt allegedly orchestrated by Young Thug and YSL. According to Quan, he asked Young Thug after the incident if he was behind the attempt on him, which Thug denied. Shortly after the attempt on him, an attempt was made on his father, with his father being ambushed and struck four times, but thankfully surviving. So new details got released by the police about rich homie Quan's unaliving. Because I'm saying myself, I think this was foul play because these details, they just, they don't seem right. So let me read them to you. It says, Atlanta police reveal new details from the night rich homie Quan was found unalive. An officer who responded to the home spoke with rich homie Quan's girlfriend and brother around 3 a.m. Quan's brother said he found the rapper asleep on the floor near the kitchen counter with food in his mouth. The officer revealed that his brother described it as very unusual and moved him from the floor to the couch. Now, hold on. Let's stop right here for a second before I continue. 
You telling me Quan brother found him slumped over in the kitchen? Near the kitchen counter? And all he did was move him to the couch? So your brother slumped over with food in his mouth and you don't try to wake him up or nothing? You just drug him to the couch. Come on, man. Man, that, that, that don't sound right at all. But let me continue. Quan's girlfriend said she woke up around 6.45 a.m to get the kids ready for school and noticed he wasn't in their bedroom. She spotted him asleep on the couch and left and dropped off the kids. When she returned home, she saw he was still asleep and went back to bed. She told the police she woke up around 11 a.m to check on Quan and found his body cold and called 911. Now, hold on. That ain't what she said on the 911 call. She said she had checked on him and put a cover over him because it get cold in their living room. Matter of fact, let me let y'all listen to the 911 call when she say that. Check it out. All right, you need police fire or ambulance? I need an ambulance. Tell me exactly what happened. Um, my boyfriend, he's been asleep on the couch um, since this morning. Well, he never came to bed last night. Sleep on the couch. I left him on the couch before I took my son to school this morning and put a blanket over him. And now I just checked on him again because he never got up. I don't feel a heartbeat. I don't see him breathing. And you said, hold on, you said on the couch and what happened? I said I put a cover over him because he gets a little cool and he's in the living room. And now I just checked on him because I see he never got up. Now this could be nothing. She could have just forgot to tell the police officer that she put a blanket on him before she left with the kids. And then she came back and just went to bed, even though he still was asleep. But something else is suspicious to me, too, because while she was on the phone talking to the 911 dispatcher, she tried to switch over to talk to Quan's father. Why would you want to do that when rich homie Quan brother was right there. He was in there while she was talking to the dispatcher. He didn't say nothing. He was standing there quiet. It wasn't until the dispatcher told her to put Quan on the floor flat on his back. And she needed help. And you heard her say, help me. And that's when dude started talking. Quan brother, listen for yourself. Okay, are you right by, by him now? Yes. Okay, please put your phone on speaker so your hands are free to help. Can I add his dad to the call? He's trying to call me back because I called him first before I called you. Okay, so we need to help. We need to help your boyfriend now. Okay, listen carefully. Lay him flat on his back on the floor and remove anything under his head. He is not waking up. Quick. Wait a minute. She talking to his brother right there. And the dispatcher had to bring her back. Check it out. Ma'am? Yes? Okay, you, you got to get him to the floor. Lay him flat on his back on the floor and remove anything under his head. Flat on his back on the floor? Yes, ma'am. Help me. She told him, help me, and he said, okay. He's standing right there. Now, I don't know what it sound like to y'all, but that shit sound off to me. Like, if this man was unalived in the living room, his brother was there, and 
The father was calling. Why he wasn't talking to the father himself? And why she got to ask this man to help her get him off the couch? I mean, and even if he did just walk in the room, he already knew that he was unalive. Because if he didn't, that's the first thing she would have screamed out to him. Kwana unalive. Help me. She would have said that to him. But this dude was calm and cool like he already knew. Because he did. Something ain't right. It's going to come out, man. What's done in the dark shall come to the light. And if his brother or his girl got something to do with it, shame on them, man. Hopefully they don't. Hopefully I'm just being super suspicious. But this don't sound right. Straight up. Inside the mafia. I'm out. After that audio hit the internet in 2023, Rich Homie Quan got labeled a snitch. As a street rapper, having a name snitch attached to your name is not a good look. This audio leak put it all in perspective for fans. Now everybody know the real reason on why Rich Homie Quan and Young Thug stopped rocking with each other. Because allegedly, Young Thug had his YSL crew take out Big Nut. In 2014, the year Lifestyle dropped, everything was love. Nut can be seen in this video vibing with Young Thug, Birdman, and Quan. Young Thug had love for nut. Somewhere within a year, something went wrong. Allegedly, it is said that Birdman wanted Rich Homie Quan to sign under him so he could make Young Thug and Quan an official duo under Rich game. But Nut and Quan didn't care to make that happen. YSL members and Young Thug started aggressively pressuring Quan into doing it. Nut wasn't going for it. Nut was killed on January 10th, 2015. Just eight days before that, Nut posted on his Instagram page a picture with him and Birdman. The caption reads, Me and OG Stunner summertime booling la bondo blood love my name in may of 2022 young thug and 27 others was arrested as part of a 56 count indictment one of the members ysl woody played a big part in the rico coming down on young thug the whole time ysl Lil woody had been given law enforcement information in the young thug rico trial Lil woody took the stand and admitted to shooting up richard mcquan father barbershop 2014 someone shot up Rich Homie Kwan's father's barbershop. Rich Homie Kwan was trying to find answers to who shot up his father's barbershop, correct? Yes. I mean, he came to you for answers. Once you were given immunity as a witness in this case, you testified in court earlier when Miss Hilton was asking questions that it was in fact you and Trevante Turner who shot up Rich Homie Kwan's barbershop, didn't you? How big was it like when Young Thug dropped your name in a song on the halftime song, you know, Lil Woody. I'm in Fallis. Ooh, nigga, try me. I swear I got Lil Woody pull up and pop at it, nigga. Like, how big was that for you? Like, like was that like crazy? Like, you know? It was stupid. It brought a lot of heat on you? I was in jail. The song was made like in 2014. He put it out while I was in jail. I got out. They let me hear the song. I was like, just drop this song. And they, the police, they already after me. And I got mad, you feel me? Because people was already in my ears telling me some bullshit stuff. And I started to feel like the stuff they were telling me was true. So within 24 hours, I was surrounded in the gym with the gun in the bag after I just got out of jail. So I got released on April the 27th, and the police ran down on me April the 28th and got the gun. And they were like, uh, I'm at the top of their radar because of this song. So it, it basically like made them target me. But yeah, what the H this N talking about? Detective Dennis, then uh, is, I can't understand what he's saying. And then you say, it sound like it. Detective Dennis said, you think so? You said, I don't think he did it. I don't know. Detective Dennis said, so with all this stuff with Nut, what was his reaction to it? Meaning Birdman. You said, from me to you, he was trying to pay them to keep quiet. Detective Dennis asked you, pay who to keep quiet? You said them. Detective Dennis said, who is them? You said, nuts, folks. Detective Dennis said, oh, just go about their business? You said, yup. Detective Dennis, here, take this, shut the H-E-L-L -L up, leave it alone. You said, I think it was 200000 Detective Dennis said, a payoff. You said, I heard that right in my own ears. Detective Dennis said, who he supposedly paid to? And you said, fly, 
He texted me and said, who's fly? You said, the man who owned the TIG is kind of a way y'all can just man, if you don't mind listening to this. Nobody. Not one person walking on earth can say something to me. Not one. The only person that ever been there for me was God. Hey, I don't get on here and, and pretend to be tough. Yo, this. But I know you see me on live. Why you gonna text me and call me, bro? I'm in my mode. Cause these niggas out here be trying to impress other nigga, man. Come on, man. Like kid, man. I'm telling y'all now, man. All that plan. What did they use? Whatever the day is, at this time right here, all that high behind fake page, whatever y'all doing, this a one that I don't want no problems with nobody. But if somebody play with me, better make sure you're the only person walking the earth. Because <laughs> I know you're going to hide. Huh. I ain't no gangster. Just a lost soul. Never, I ain't never want to be a gangster. Don't even consider me no gangster. When you see me speak, keep going. Yeah, I'm playing. It's not no threats, bro. I just don't want to be bored. There's no threat. If don't nobody mess with me, I don't. I won't mess with nobody. And if somebody miss me, the world gonna know. It's not about crashing out. I'm, I'm on I'm on social media with since everybody think I love Instagram so much. I'm telling everybody, I'm telling to whoever listening, the police, the the civilians, the gang members, and whoever else, the religion people, whoever, leave me alone. Leave me alone. That's it. If you gonna do something to me, just do it. Don't don't get on this social media talking about, oh, we gonna do this or you can't do that. Man, I wake up. Even if I wake up and I choose violence, guess what I do? I go where I wanna go. I do what I need to do. And everybody who helps saw me helps saw me by myself. And if they did see me with somebody, it's somebody who ain't. Nowhere in the streets. Again, I respect nigga gangsters. I, that's why I made it for in life. I didn't think I was better than the next nigga. I didn't walk around with my chest out unless somebody made me poke that motherfucker out. But y'all around here playing. Y'all around here playing. Anyway, I do want to know how on earth is Atlanta allowing Woody to flex money that he got as a byproduct of telling on Thug, he's saying, come get it. I'm in the streets. Y'all niggas don't want no problems with me. And the whole Atlanta is quiet as a church mouse. Matter of fact, I'm going to keep it a bean with you. We don't even hear nobody saying free Thug no more. You know why? Because they would look crazy. The nigga who putting Thug in jail, he's up in the club flexing. By the way, when he's pop, but yo, he's getting booked for club appearances. When why so Woody's getting booked for club appearances? He's not getting booked as Woody or whatever he wants to be called. They're calling YSL Woody. He's the face of YSL. Chat, y'all gotta check this out. I ain't gonna lie. Ain't no fucking way. He's doing club appearances. Apparently, apparently he got paid uh, 10 bands for this club appearance right here. Check this out, chat. Oh, oh shit. He playing that YB. I saw Woody in the building. What the fuck? Hold the clutch in. What's that? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> I hold this. He's gonna run you over, Herb. Wait, wait, wait. So how do I get going? Take these out the clip. Oh. I bid 22. And what, what you got Adam doing, man? I'm trying to hook it 
Uh, <laughs> Alright, what's that one do? Get a dope? Oh, it's probably good. Oh, you gotta walk there? Oh, no, I don't know. Uh, everything right here. If we walk to them, this is close one. And he bought a five minute Yeah. I tried to shoot somebody in the, in the club on the stage, and my gun didn't it 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 didn't go out, and it's a Glock. Caught that. Beside that, I had got into it with this guy that I know, and they was on the internet talking, and I had a fantasy. My fantasy was one of the crazy ones. I was gonna set an example in front of everybody, and I had the opportunity to set an example. And once I tried to set an example to him in front of everybody, I was real position. I tried to shoot somebody in the, in the club on the stage, and my gun didn't it 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 didn't go out, and it's a Glock. Caught that, it didn't go out. I gave the gun to somebody else, it didn't go out. We got in the car, lift. As we ran up Bankhead, uh, I'm cussing dude out like, man, you got this gun, man. Ooh. I hear the window going down, and I hear boom, and me and everybody in the car was just quiet. I swear, tears just fell out my eyes. Like, I don't know why it just it just dropped. I went sad on that. I was just like, what the world? Cause I don't heard people say they had a revolver and I'm like, man, it's kept. But to actually happen on me, and no, I wasn't faking at the time, like, I'm gonna do this fool. I was just like, it wasn't meant. You know what I mean? And there was an eye open. Everybody saw me, like, the dude, brother pushed me off the stage. I was trying to get him. Yeah, man. But I was lost, you know what I mean? Like, the murder of Donovan Thomas, correct? They charged me. Right. And when you say they, let's, let's talk about that. When you say they, you're talking about Detective Thorpe, correct? So I'm talking about the police, the DA. I don't know who did it, but they, they told me I've been charged with murder. Okay. Do you remember in 2015, and we talked about it, you, you gave statements about where you were that day, right? That you felt cleared you from the murder? I did. Okay. And um, you also lied to the police about Tamikian telling you certain information. Well, I don't say that for like big time. Right. And you would agree that if someone were to believe that lie, it would have cleared you from the murder, right? I don't, I don't get what you're saying. speculation. It's a strange. Okay, well, let me ask you this. Detective Thorpe, he took those warrants out on you in October of 2015, correct? He took them out on me while I was in jail. Right. After you gave that statement on June 10th, 2015, right? Some months after, yeah. Right. So he heard what you said on June 10th, 2015, and then months after that, he <coughs> took out warrants for your arrest. <coughs> you say that again? He heard what you said on June 10th, 2015, and then months later, warrants were taken out for your arrest for that murder, correct? Yes. Okay. And finally, um, may I approach the evidence room? Yes. Why did you ask for Thug to pay your bond after you had told on them in a June 10th interview? I didn't tell on them. I was going through a phrase in my life. I made it all up. I sat right there and, and said whatever came to the top of my head that I put piece certain things together and said what I said. If you listen to both of them calls, they contradict each other. If you listen to the interview, you hear what the police keep saying. And that's why I put everything on Thug. The man that had nothing to do with my stupidity. I'm sitting right here today telling y'all the truth and y'all still sitting right here playing with me.
this lady. Like I told you, I made it up. I put it on him. What blood set were you a part of? Can you repeat that? What <laughs> blood set were you a part of? What blood set were I a part of? Yes, sir. I wasn't a part of no real blood set. Did you ever claim to be a Billy Blood? I said I was. Okay. And were you? No. Did you tell Detective Gaither that you were, I mean, not Detective Gaither, Detective Lewis, in that February 21st interview that you were Billy Blood? I don't know what I told them in the, in the, in the, when they questioned me. Okay. Do you recall talking to Detective Lewis about the meeting with Mo where they said that they were going to kill you? Huh? Do you remember talking to Detective Lewis about that the meeting with Mo, who was in prison, and that they were planning on killing you? I don't recall. Okay. And do you recall her asking you why you weren't at this meeting? Huh? Do you recall her asking you why you weren't at this meeting? Why was I at the meeting? Why were you not at the meeting? At what meeting? The meeting with the Bloods, the meeting of the Bloods trying to kill you. I don't recall. Okay. And do you... Re sure. February 21st. What year? 2015. And then, do you recall telling her you weren't down with them, but that you were Billy Blood? I don't recall. Okay. And then, do you recall her asking, who are you with now? I don't recall. Okay. And you told her, at that point, they got mad. I told her? You told Detective Lewis. Oh, this a lady? Yes. At that point, they got mad because I didn't go back with them. I started hanging out with Thug and them, so I'm YSL. No, I don't recall. Did you consider yourself part of the gang YSL? Faces. It's an improper question. Uh, I, I didn't mean for you to speak. I just want you to give me a basis. Over, overrule your overrule, sir. Did you consider yourself part of YSL, the gang? <laughs> Gang, I consider myself 372. When did you consider yourself 372? What you mean, when? 